Hi everyone, welcome to our crack class today. Today is Thursday and hello to our viewers and our guests. Now, who are we? Most of you know, but those who do not know, I'm Era and Mario. We are your moderators and today on the stage we have Bjorn Heinze, CEO and the co-founder at Smart Places Protocols, Tim Brickman, co-founder at IMX, John Shakina, founder and CEO at Mandala, and we do have a talk with us, executive producer of Mandala. So before we dive into today's topic and talk about all the juicy parts, I am gonna pass the mic to Mario to get our guests a little bit more. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Thanks, Era. Uh, great to have you all uh, here at the same time in our in our crowdcast. Um, right. So, disclaimer to uh, to the audience and everyone. Uh, before uh, we, as Ufo start, we are uh, advisors to to IMX and uh, to Smart Places Protocol. Uh, so, just so you know, uh, for now, you know, as uh, our. Um, as our regular listeners know, we always start with a little uh, fun fact about ourselves. So I would encourage uh, all of our guests. So Aaron, I am going to share a fun fact, but no more details. Uh, for our guests, I would uh, encourage you to share one fun fact and also uh, how you ended up in the blockchain space in the first place. Uh, as a little intro, we'd like to show where all these you know, ways, how do people find into the space? And uh, yes, that being said, I think I need to go first. So my fun fact is uh, very fresh. Since this week, I am um, part of the board of a little club in Berlin called the uh, Baden Verein der Baden Württemberger in Berlin. Right, it's a small area where I'm from in Berlin, uh, from Germany, and we have a diaspora in Berlin. So now, and this is my fun fact. Please uh, hand over to Björn. Yeah, um, first of all, uh, thanks uh, for, for having me here. Totally excited about that. Yeah, my name is Björn, um, born and raised in Berlin. So actually, my fun fact relates to that uh, later. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a co-founder and CEO of Smart Places. I have a legal background. So I'm a lawyer specialized in data privacy and uh, compliance. I work for some legal firms and also some um uh, audit firms in the past and uh, some years ago i also uh, co-founded a data uh, privacy uh, agency data also an it development company and now for smart places i'm in charge of all the operational challenges and of course all the the legal uh, compliance stuff that's coming up um yeah regarding fun fact um maybe uh, in berlin it's it's quite famous um as i just learned so it's also a very um updated uh, fun fact i just learned that um, uh, french fries people love to eat them with ketchup and uh, mayonnaise and i actually uh, can't stand that so yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, all right so the question no how i came to the... for you <laughs> yeah you name it um how i came to the blockchain um yeah actually from a from a legal perspective the blockchain is totally um totally exciting um because you of course on the one hand i have uh, all this transparency you have the possibilities for uh, anonymous uh, behavior and uh, so for an old sector or let's say a traditional sector like like the legal sector that is totally exciting to find there the the right way in between to also translate this technology to the regulations right and so i some years ago i started to uh, somehow dive in in that and um yeah i was totally trapped um in, in the rabbit hole and since uh, then very excited to um to learn more about that Great, thanks for the intro. Uh, anyone wants to go next? Volunteers first. I would say Kevin, let's go. I, I know John won't, so I'm gonna have to. So um, uh, Kevin Fox, a uh, little background on my, of me is I've been around a long time doing Hollywood stuff, movies, TV, mm -hmm. um, always doing interactive stuff as well and pushing the sort of edge and envelope of storytelling. I like to break a lot of rules and do things people wouldn't normally do. Um, and yeah, I started the Producers Guild New Media Council many, many years ago, which was the initiative to bring more gaming and sort of, um, you know, new new media into the space. 
So I'm always on that front edge of, of using tech to tell stories. Um, met these guys with this great story that I thought, well, first of all, I would say I was looking to create a multi-platform story. I, I love metaverse ideas and the whole concept of doing things that are very immersive. I like story dwelling, not storytelling. Uh, and so we really, uh, I worked for years and years trying to find a project that would work. And I met John and his partners and they had this amazing concept that actually needed to be told across many platforms. And I got involved. So yeah, here I am. A fun fact about me is, is that I was digitally uh, replicated many years ago. So you're talking to an avatar right now. And how I got into the blockchain was I've been waiting for the blockchain. I've been sitting on a server somewhere waiting for the blockchain. And boom, now it's, it's here. It's coming. So I can actually get, I can come out and play now. So, yeah. Wonderful. We're a uh, pixel positive here uh, in, uh, in, the, in the UFO community. So welcome. Uh, um, all right. Maybe want to uh, continue with uh, John then uh, right away. Sure. I'm happy to go. Um, so my name is Johnny and uh, I'll give a little background. I'm one of the co-founders of Mandala and I'm currently the CEO. And um, one of our uh, other partners and I um, met a long time ago at Harvard and we were studying comparative mythology. And we started to realize that all these different cultures and paths, stories, mythology, cosmologies, were really leading people to themselves, to the truth of who they are. And so being uh, avid D&D &D players ourselves, even though we were already in university, we started to conceive of what we called the Enlightenment game. And so that was the seed of, of Mandala a long time ago. Um, but many, many years later, um, our partner went on to do his PhD at Columbia. And I was dropped out living in the mountains of Colorado, not looking at any media at all whatsoever and returned to New York City to visit our partner. And he took me to see two films, which I hadn't seen in, in many, many years. And the first was The Matrix. And that was mind blowing and inspiring and actually inspired us to start writing television and, and film scripts and comic books to complement this enlightenment game idea. But he also took me to this, to a theater to see this movie called The Blair Witch Project of which I ha absolutely had zero idea that it was fictional at all. So I'm one of those people, um, fun fact, that thought the Blair Witch was real. And now I'm sitting with the executive producer who made it. And it's still real. It's still real. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Uh, great, uh, great story. Uh, and OK, so. Last but not least of the guest part, uh, please, uh, Tim, uh, you know the drill, right? Uh, you're not the first. Yes, the fun fact. Yes, the fun fact. I've been here and I always enjoy being with Aaron and Mario. I like this uh, crowdcast because I feel like sitting in my living room. It's so nice, you know, sitting and having just friends around me. It, it feels so small. I like that. And um, the fun fact, yeah, I, I've been here some already some time. And uh, my fun fact was that last summer, uh, I've been in Mallorca and uh, diving. And in Mallorca, you rarely have dolphins. It's very, very rare. I was doing with the boat with two friends. And we were just cruising a little bit. And one of our guys said, hey, there's a dolphin. There's a dolphin. Look, look, look. And we say, yeah, yeah, you, perhaps you drink something. He can't be dolphins, OK? And then we saw the dolphins. Everybody jumped, you know, very fast. We put up some diving suits, bottle, bam, bam. Everybody jumped in. Who? forget his weight belt it was me so i <laughs> was swimming on the surface the other guy was diving with the dolphins that's it that was funny for the others not this funny for me <laughs> that's the fun fact and uh, yeah I, I how i come into blockchain i came into blockchain like starting uh, at, at uh, e-commerce uh, company called handy.de and uh, there was the devs it was i think five years ago, and the devs told me, hey, do you have Bitcoin, Tim? I said, no, it's, I think it's a scam, it's nothing. And they talked to me every day, every day, and the guy was really a nice, cool dude. And I said, yeah, okay, I buy a Bitcoin. You, you're treating me 14 days like, buy, 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 okay. So I took my 9,000 euro and bought my first Bitcoin. I saw the next day, it was much higher. <laughs> so 
okay, I have to, I have to look at it. And then it comes uh, the greed of internal human beings. And yeah, <laughs> that made me being a blockchain guy. It was greedy. Yes, it was uh, seeing it goes up and I don't like to miss the train. So I'm afterwards, I learned what is FOMO. I FOMO'd in f for sure. I was a completely FOMO guy. And the same thing happened to me meeting Mandala. First, I, I don't know who gave me a hint. So look there, it's something nice, very colorful. They have dolphins, you know, as characters and animals. It looks really cool <laughs> because I like this picture. The dolphin person. thing sits deep, right? <laughs> it's very deep, yeah. I think they are better human beings, okay? I like to be a dolphin later on. And um, it was, um, I, I looked at the web page and I, I scrolled down and I said, wow, I have to mint one. Uh, and if I minted the first, uh, NFT, I thought how detailed the work is behind it. You find a video five years old and it was already talking about Mandala. So I was blown away. I scrolled down. I said, wow, AI, which is uh, one of my hobbies, you know, to look AI, read a little bit about it. And I thought they are working with Dr. Ben Gertz, as the guy behind the Robert Sophia with the Singularity Net. I was blown away and tried everything to get in touch with them. And finally, one of our IMX partners, the NFT maker, big up to Christian and Patrick. Um, yeah, yeah they, they got us in touch. And uh, I think from the first moment on, it was really something, yeah, it's, it's, it's they live self-sovereign identity, what is the, the back of IMX. So this was really so inspiring. Wait, did, did you mint a dolphin? I minted also one dolphin, yeah. Oh, good, okay. Whew. And the Sky Dancer I minted, which is very, oh, oh. I was very lucky to have that. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is uh, how I how I got in touch in the first um, talk. Uh, with it was for me we, we have a biometric uh, terminal we built with IMX, and what I also liked that John already told me biometric. Oh, that's not nice. And I said, okay, this guy really knows. Uh, what is self-sovereign identity? It doesn't have to start with a biometric scanner. Mm. Just a small detail you can use if you have. Yeah, it, it's another use case. But they are so self-sovereign identity that even the NFTs are called sovereign. Great. Uh, thanks, Tim. Um, and welcome. And I guess, uh, Era, next one's on you. I was thinking I was off the hook, but never with no. you. Great, so I'll go. Yeah, my fun fact actually just, you know, like see, uh, sitting in front of my eyes, um, I'm at this point kind of confident to say like, I seriously kind of resurrect like plants. <laughs> there's so many plants that they've been dead for like a long time and they said there's not going to come alive, but like I've been collecting plants and then having given them kind of life and I'm proud of that. It is maybe not so fun fact, but it is my fact for today to share. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. Then uh, just before we before I will start into the into the questions uh, part, I want to remind the audience uh, to ask a question in the question section. Uh, we're going to come back to that at, at the end. Uh, I see one is already placed. Please feel free to ask and upvote the questions that you like. Um, and uh, yes, I guess uh, Era, it's uh, off to. Your yes, questions. That's a way to ask and then learn from you guys. So the first question would be, so this crowdcast is about users, users are claiming their power back, right? What does that word mean to you in that sense? And um, I just want to know before we deep dive into topics, so just the, at the beginning, and I would say, John, let's start with you. If you would not mind. Oh, maybe I'll let Kevin jump in first and I'll, I'll follow. So yeah, the question was, and let me make sure I got it, the power coming back to us or? Power having... coming to yeah. users, right, right. I'm sorry, having the, uh, the power to back the users, but like what does power, what does word means? And then, you know, like in what cause are we here in, in this environment? I, you know, for me, and uh, having been in this space a very long time, both through Web 1, Web 2, Web 3, whatever we want to call all these things, you know, every time I think we as humans in this world understand who we are and what we want to do and wh why we're here, kind of. I think we're then in search of that a lot, but I think we, have, I think we know somehow deep in our DNA, we know. 
And I feel like that gets taken away a lot from us by the powers that be and the things around us in the world and the way societies have to shape and work together and form. Um, and you know, we keep seeing technology appear and make it look like it has some solution for us that's going to fix uh, all these things. And yet here we are living in this incredibly interoperable, crazy world, right? And we're gonna try and replicate that all the time. And we're gonna make it better. When in fact, look around, we're making the one we exist in worse already. So I think that's already a big issue for me, which is this concept of, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna rebuild it better this time. Um, this time with the metaverse and blockchain and all that's going on, I actually really believe there's a foundational piece that's being created that will give us our power back. Um, the real question though is, can we stop it from being taken away again? And that we're, I think we're at a really important moment right now in creating all the things we're creating that are going to lead to this next virtual world we're going to live in. Um, and we really, and because we've seen it happen once or twice already, right? With technology, with the web, with this idea of a de democratized um, system that we can use. And are, is it going to get taken away again by these, you know, corporations and entities and, you know, nefarious powers or greed, as we brought up earlier before the call? And if we, I really believe blockchain and the people we're meeting and talking to, I mean, meeting smart places, meeting NFT maker, meeting Tim, people, there are a lot of us here as a rebel force trying to give power back. And I think power starts with who you are, your identity. And that's not just who you're seen as from the outside, but who you see yourself as. And that's very, very crucial and important. Let's get people to see themselves in a positive manner and then the world around us will see us in that same light and then we will have the power we want to have not the power that we're allowed to have i can understand so like is it um having the identity and then like and the composing this identity and all right so that's what the word of meaning and well i i think you get to create your identity right. you know i, I mean I, the world i grew up in my identity was kind of foisted upon me sort of, right? <laughs> I was given a license. I was given a birth certificate. I was given a name. I was, you know, you know what I mean? And I think now we have an opportunity to possibly choose those for ourselves and let's start creating a virtual character. Maybe, maybe it's just for a game and create the person you want to become. Right. But just what Kevin said, you know, that um, we get giving the identity the, di the driving license, all the paperwork. We live in a plastic paper world coming to our identity, our identity, and it's controlled and capitalized by big corps. And this you have to, I think uh, the listeners have to really imagine that all that what you use is controlled and capitalized by big corporations. You know, you can open your iPhone with your biometric data and then we can transfer it to somewhere to Apple, it will be transferred. Or, but I can't send it to Kevin if I like to. And I think I have more trust in Kevin than in Apple, okay? Because I have more contact with Kevin. So I even can't send my biometric data to my mom. So if you see the era where the where you and your identity is like a, it's like a product that this is controlled and capitalized by, by Meta, Apple and co. And this is coming to an end. And there we are here. And I know it will come to an end. And if you look at WC3C, they are working 15 years on a construct how to decentralize the identity. And they come to a conclusion after 15 years. And the companies I was just talked about, it's five companies, they don't agree. They say, no, we have to look again. It's not perfect. It's perfect. It's just that they lose their business. And yeah. it has to be in our minds. I love what you just said, Tim. That was so great. You can't share your your uh i'd even call it dna but it's your virtual dna with your mom and your mom shared all of her dna with you that's insane yeah. and apple, <laughs> but apple, apple, apple can take it all or some other entity can take it all that's crazy yeah if it's whoever has taken it i'm not like just blaming apple yeah we have a lot of big corps their yeah. product is making you their product yeah, that is, yeah let's uh, not pick on apple 
It's a nice picture you painted. Just a very nice picture. I, I agree. I will use that, Tim. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Uh, I think uh, if you listen to 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 Bjorn, yeah, I think he has also brought this more in my mind with his really deep knowledge of privacy, that um, the change is here and with the social decentralized social media what they are coming up with that is really really interesting for us as just living a small technique to make it happen this decentralization yeah i i actually totally agree on that and i want to say one thing before you go which is important and i think it's something that'll maybe set the stage for what you're about to do and that is you know power that, that what well, you asked about power right power is not this unique thing that we individually hold it's a thing we hold collectively together that's really important and the these corporations want you to think it's you know individualized it's a power and, and that's what they're trying to do is compartmentalize it so that it's a lot easier to stop one thing as opposed to a whole bunch of things and collectively, yeah. that's where the power is. And that's what this is all about, I think. So sorry, Norm, because that's where you're that's what you're talking about, the collective power of Yeah. Of I, I totally um I totally agree with that. And I would just like to add because um, as I said, specialized in data privacy, what I've done for, for many years in the past was um, analyzing and also auditing these centralized social media solutions like um, which are now um, in, in use yeah. and the billions of people are using that. And I've um, analyzed that from a legal perspective and also from a, from a user perspective. And um, to say it in simple words, it's, um, it's just um, terrible uh, because um, these companies, they, they take the data of the users, they sell this data. It's totally in, in, uh, transparent. So you as a user never know where your data, uh, where they have gone. So who's the receiver? You also have no possibility to find out or figure out um, even not if you're um, really reading all this documentation what no um, normal user uh, user would do um, so that showed me and um, in, 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 as a result also for smart places that that is a way that is not that is not good um, you, you can't just um, use a user as a kind of product um, just okay free service but that's it so from our side and then we come to the empowering of users from from our perspective, we decided very early that we wanted to go another way. We we wanted to put the user in the in the center of all, to have the transparency at, at um, all the times on the one hand, and secondly, and I think that's also an important part when it comes to empowering users, to allow users to monetize their data by themselves, because yeah. um, we think it, it's the, the uh, way is better op option for a user to decide whether they want to monetize the data or not. And um, so that we have put uh, in, the, in the focus from the very beginning. And also, and I think this is um, uh, also a crucial aspect to have this compliant aspect in mind, because um, I think there are um, many, many projects that, that um, are very visionary, but it's still very important to, to have a close look on what is, what is possible and what is not possible. And that's why we are um, also very happy to, to partner uh, up with, with IMX because um, they are these experts for ex exactly these parts when it comes to identity, for example. So experts in that and um, a deep um, experience. Um, and um, in, in, uh, on our side, it's the legal aspect that helps. And I think this combination, having a, a good and a, a broad vision, helping the people, bringing the, the power back to the users, building up the trust, but also having the technology and the and the framework, the legal framework, the compliance framework to make all that possible. Um, I think if th if these um, measures are combined, then I think we have then we have I think a real a, a solution which can work and which allows us also to become big one day and to maybe really change something uh, one day. I like to for for Bjorn. There was I think it was just two months or three months ago. Um, it's again Apple, I'm sorry, but um, they changed how they can track people. And uh, that was not good for Facebook. They lost, lost a lot of um, ad power. And imagine that they're talking about us. They didn't ask me if I, I like to get tracked anyway. And they yeah. talk, okay, how can we, ah, we can't, uh, we can't give you so much money Apple, because we can't track him anymore. And they didn't ask me. I can say, okay, track me, send me 10 bucks every day, you can track me. You didn't ask me, okay? So I, I take it a little bit with the humor, but um, 
the laugh, I think, should be very short because they monetizing, you know, that's what I sometimes even don't know. And uh, also, if my battery is empty from the from the from the cell phone, you know, the GP, G, the GPR, the GPS, GPS uh, system is running a week long. Okay, so it's very important for them to know what you are doing. And someone, I, I'm not illegal. They can, but they have to ask me. At least yeah. they have to ask me. And if they make millions with my data, I like to have my share. That's normal, I think. Exactly. So before we go into very uh, deep in that, I just, because the keyword is right, like the users and leaving power back to the user, but I'm a user, everyone's a user here. So my the question would be then here, the next question, the biggest contributing factor for me as a user, what can I do when I try to reclaim my power back? Because we are talking about the giving the power back and everything giving, but like the contribution of receiving it because it's mine. So what's your thought on that? And this is where we, I think, where we begin now. I think it's a start. The world of decentralization yeah. is is starting. We are beginning. I think the user has to watch, has to be open his mind a little bit, being aware of all these facts we are we have been talked now already about. So I think it's 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 very important just to to be open for this, think about this, and then I think. Uh, the revolution is ongoing and we will you will find the product you know there's already a social media there's already something like imx can can give you their identity also on a government level and we have another entertaining part which is multi blockchain also with the mandala uh, uh, metaverse yeah so i think it's even bigger than a metaverse you know it's um this is something i think where you have to a little bit wait as a user to have the perfect ux you know you know you have to work with it easily the ux is missing the tech is there but now the tech has to develop so you love it as a user mm -hmm. and i yeah, believe the user just, needs to be maybe. slightly educated right about what this is and what's happening and tim's nailing it and i think you know I, smart places the idea that you uh, that someone's making money off your data Let's leave out the part of privacy and who you are, or not, but somebody else is making money off your data. And if that switch can be flipped where you're making the money off your data, <laughs> I mean, that's a big one right there, right? And that's an educational piece and it needs to be functional. And here you guys are going to build a thing that makes it functional. Yeah, I, I totally yeah, we agree. We it together for us to say also the journey to go with smart places protocol completely different than other clients or partners we have on the other side of mandala also needing special tech for us you know so this is we are getting guided because we even don't know ourselves what will pop up where is identity solution needed so we build our tech very open that we can use it everywhere and yeah, yeah this is the journey we have I, I agree on that. Um, and I think, um, especially regarding this education aspect, I think that is very important. So on the one hand, of course, having like, like we try to do, um, offering services as, uh, from the provider side. Um, so um, making sure that users, people can use such a technology and really benefit from that. But on the other hand, also the users that, that hopefully are more and more aware of these topics and are also willing to maybe accept the change, right? Because I mean, of course, it's comfortable to, to say I, I use Instagram or, or Twitter or whatever. Everybody's on there and I just stay there. But if they're open minded and recognize for themselves that it would make uh, sense to maybe change, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow, then I think um, there are a lot of um, opportunities. Well, that's one thing. So we tend to believe or I do is that storytelling is the best way to educate you know nobody nobody there's very few people who like to sit in school <laughs> you know so what, that was what yeah. was so interesting with Mandala and John you know there's a way to tell a story that will I hope um, get people aware of these things that we're talking about but in a very fun unique way but in a meaningful way where they take it to heart as deeply as they take you know these movies they watch and these television shows they yeah. watch to heart so so there, there's a way to make the story. That's a very interesting. Yeah, what yeah, I like. It's a very interesting know. topic, and 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 I think you know just to to is some something that I, I talked to somebody else, like a lawyer, a couple of days ago, 
uh, and he had also like a similar topic, like a dry topic, you know, like cases and and uh, and this. And he is uh, in, a, in his private uh, time. He works on presenting kind of court uh, cases in a comic format, right? To make this very dry topic somehow a uh, uh, fun uh, yeah. fun part. Also, similarly, you know, you can make everything. I, I, I totally agree. I, th I think that is really the, the main challenge that we all have to have such um, exciting solutions in place that the users that it's easy for them to change. And, and just by the way, that is um, what, what we also try to do with the NFT land plot sale, which you just mentioned in the, in the very beginning, that we um, try to make it more, more easy to understand things. Because in our case, for example, um, the users, they, they just can go, we, we have our NFT land plot sale on Saturday at 4 p.m. Um, UTC starting that, and users, they can they can choose a land plot. So they go on, on, a, on a map and they, directly see okay i can choose something like that i can i can um, buy it i receive an nft and if later on users um connecting in the in the real world on, on such a, a land plot the owners the pioneers that's how we call them are rewarded with tokens so that's just an example but that's how we try to to make it more handleable and more easy understandable for users to say hey you can you can have fun you can socialize but you also get something out of mm -hmm. that, you know, and um, that's actually, think, that's yeah. actually great. Sorry, please. Yeah. Sorry. sorry yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I that's think what, exactly I what I want to dive into. Maybe I can add this kind of question because it, we're diving into uh, smart places uh, already, which is uh, quite exciting. I think many came for here. Um, I just caught some of the things, you know, that you did you mention also on your website is like connecting digital and real life um connect to earn or uh, and nfts going social maybe you can you know give us uh, and the audience uh, mostly like uh, an overview like how, how does it work what do you guys do how does it work what's yeah, happening on saturday a, yes on, on saturday yes so maybe one step back in general what what we do is um if users interact or if they connect because our social eco ecosystem is based on that we we reward users if they um, contribute to this kind of, of interaction. So if, if somebody's um, using our, our um, iOS or Android um, uh, apps that we will launch in, in summer, um, then they are rewarded with tokens. So that is the, the, the core and the base behind that. But what we do now on Saturday is that we um, we divided the world in hexagons and small hexagons. So every hexagon is, is a piece of, um, of, of the world. And you as a, as I said, pioneer, if you just choose one of those land plots and you just can choose whatever, wherever land plot you want in the world. Um, the, the best case would be you choose a land plot where you um, assume that later on people will interact on this place. So that might be um, maybe a mall, that might be um, the Times Square or wherever. So if you choose this land plot and um, later on this users interact there or um, also monetize their data, then you are rewarded as well. So um, the, the focus behind that is to, to bring this topic, this monetization topic closer to the users, closer to, to make it more visible that whatever they are doing, um, they finally decide, do they want to participate on that or not? Because I think that, and uh, we in general think that is the future because otherwise we just keep the central solutions like they are now, these companies making the money, the users are creating the value and that is not um, how it should be. So. That is one possibility. Of course, there are many others. We just heard it uh, here right now. There are very exciting um, possibilities and opportunities how to how, how things could develop. But um, this is just one example. So maybe take a look on or join our Discord and see how it works. Absolutely. I, I just think had a, really had a look. That will be very interesting if John explains the monetization of the AI concept. Yeah, this is. I think also we have now Björn, what we all know, the social media, what we like to have decentralized. But uh, John told me, he explained me how you can talk to very intelligent people in their metaverse. And this is something, I don't know, John, this is, was for me really nice to hear. And perhaps other people like to hear as well. Yeah, sure. Happy to share that, Tim. So um, we're really excited to hear what Björn was talking about with smart places in terms of giving the user the choice to monetize their data because we have a similar intention and plan to do this in our metaverse and in our game, just as people are owning their assets in a game now, in a quote, play to earn game, they should be able to own all their data and 
with respect to the AI component, we're, we call what we're building an, enlight, an enlightenment simulator because it's going to be able to model different socioeconomic um, live models, potentially with lots of people and users from all around the world. And we, we had an AI guru and an AI algorithm that we were building into the plan for the game, which would, as people made decisions, then the outcome of certain maps or certain characters would be affected so that it wasn't always the same way each time that one went through a map. But then we met uh, Dr. Ben Gertzel. We were lucky enough, Kevin and I, and had a very deep conversation with him about his vision for decentralized beneficent artificial general intelligence. And we realized that we could harness the power of what he was doing in a decentralized way because we weren't interested in feeding a lot of the user data in any case to a centralized AI, of course. But the piece that Tim was asking about is that we will have what we call NPC AIs, which are in, in games, for those that don't know, NPCs are non-playing characters. So they're not a character that a user is playing. They're a character that's programmed by the, by the software to play a role in the metaverse or in the narrative. And so we are going to have luminaries and great thinkers, men and women from history and all cultures. And those NPC AIs are going to have read and digested and learned all of the material that's extant for those luminaries. So for instance, Nikolai Tesla, whatever exists of his manuscripts will be read by that AI and the players may meet that character in say the South Pole. And that AI will be learning from the users and the users will be learning from that AI. But because uh, SingularityNet is decentralized, people will be able to earn how they, they will be able to earn fiduciary you know, rewards by either sharing that data with a trusted partner that it's gonna stay decentralized. So I think what we're looking to do is ultimately harness the power of, of the, the knowledge and the wisdom of humanity and mount it in a story on top of the power of the blockchain, which ensures that these um, bad actors at, you know, in a centralized way cannot extract value from from the from the body of humanity i'll add to that and that is that this new model by the way that we're all talking about right where we control who gets our data and what data we share that's more valuable than the the scraping data that's happening now right that that's it's a very specified data it's from a user's, this talk about, we're talking about power here, right? When I get to choose what data I'm sharing, that data is way more valuable than having to aggregate all this data and parse through it. And by the way, every time an AI does that, which is it's an AI, there's not a group of people looking at this data and coming up with results. That AI is going to always be very off with that amount of data that it's looking through, unless it's being given some direction to look. And the way they have it look now is they have, this is a true story. They'll have AI watch YouTube videos all day to see what people are thinking and doing and then use that best, you know, that that sort of leaning of what it learned to then parse through all the data it's collecting from your mobile phone. So think about how valuable the data will be when we're actually selecting what data we want to share or what we've interacted with and where we've been. That's you've already scraped off the top layer of filtering mm -hmm. <laughs> data. So the data that we'll be offering for sale uh, to us, by us, and profitable to us is going to be more valuable to these, these companies who buy data. Yes, uh, guys, we, uh, we will have to, uh, we really want to have some, some questions of the, of the audience too, because there's some really, really interesting questions. But before, um, I would uh, would really like to hear you, Pion, kind of or walk us through, kind of uh, also give us the vision of how you know the world. You explain to us the world that we can uh, you know participate and maybe also earn and interact with uh, in the, on the world map with the hexagons. But you know what is what is kind of the vision? Where do you see this in 
I know in three years, in five years, maybe in 20 years, and, and how can we uh, engage, how can I as a, as a person interact, engage and benefit uh, from it? That'd be, be great. Yes, um, I think the main seeing idea the two the new... The main... so, sorry? Yeah, um, yeah the, the, um, what, what you asked regarding, uh, first of all, maybe the vision behind that, creating a new era of socializing, right? So that is, that is the main, the, 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 the real vision behind that. So, um, of course, the technology that are components that are important to finally enable that. Um, one component is the NFT land plot sale, as mentioned. Um, that somehow kickstarts um, um, our system. But um, the, the real vision behind it and coming later, coming up with, a, with the app when we have launched it, that allows um, several new aspects. On the one hand, yes, monetization, but in general, it connects people. That is what is important for us, bringing people together. Um, on the one hand, yes, online, like we know it, but on the other hand, also in real life. So allowing people, enable people to get in touch with, with others who are directly around them maybe, right? Because right now, in, in times like, like we have it now, we have a high standard of technology, but it's nearly impossible in daily life to get in touch with other people around you, for example, right? Um, that, that might be in a park, that might be at a summit or somewhere, uh, if you're searching for a skill level of, of experts or whatever. Um, so there are so many daily life opportunities that people miss and um, that, is, that, 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 that don't have to be that way. Um, so what we see is that in some days, on the one hand, we think that we can bring people more together than it's um, today the case. Because right now there is happening a lot of on, uh, online that is okay on the one hand, but it would be better if people, if they, if they, um, I mean, if they are outside and if they really meet, meet with others, that would be would be important and nice. And secondly, as said, putting the the user really in the center of all that, so enable them to decide about their data, about what they are doing, and also let them participate, because that is finally. Um, I don't want to um, um, talk now about DAOs and things like that. Of course, that's also part of of our of our goal, but. Um, these are then, of course, components. But important, finally, is that the users that they really believe and trust that um, that it's that it's not all about money, you know. Uh, yes, cool. So, so basically, I, when I checked it out, I was looking at the land plots at hexagons, you know, in my hometown and also where I'm living uh, right now. So, ideally, or the most, if I understand correctly, like the most power it unfolds if the digital and the physical space are somehow you know, if I engage in those places that I am physically also, because then I can see and interact with other other people that, you know, and have much more information. If you cross, uh, you know, the street, I don't know anything about you. I will probably not interact with you. But if I cross the digital street on smart places, so to speak, then I may have some way more information and then we can, you know, continue maybe also in real life. Is that somehow uh, accurate or how should I? I'm just trying to figure out which plot I should buy, okay? Yeah, it's uh, no, but it's great. Uh, so it would be good if you maybe if you have some some um, some abilities for being ambassador or something it would be perfect because it was a great, a great summary for that. And um, yes, it's totally correct. And uh, regarding the land plots, yes, uh, you have this uh, combination of these aspects. So people meeting in real life on the one hand, but also the land plots, which you buy virtually um, uh, using just your, your desktop and, and our, our website. And then, yes, you should uh, choose and pick this land plot where you expect that people will interact with each other, right? And um, of course, it can change. Maybe it's a it's a place where a festival happens on one day, but maybe another day not. So um, that's that's um, that are the discussions we have in our on our Discord um, a lot. So people think about what is the best place. Mm -hmm. I have a question for that's Björn also, uh, just from listening. If I buy a land plot and, you know, I'm like Mario said, okay, I, I am the one who can drive people to this plot to be there because I make a party, I make an exhibition, I make whatever, you know, I make, I attract people that come to this plot. So that is like also building a decentralized uh, business, right? Yeah, so I can have my business getting people there, they interact and I, I am earning money. Is it possible? That is, um, that is, um... That's, by the way, very smart yeah, to say um, you, you buy a land plot and then you take care of having people there in real life or maybe to connect with the locals, uh, so with the business in real life, um, retailers, whatever. 
Um, yeah, that is, um, I see Tim uh, already uh, thinking a lot about that. So yeah, that, yeah that you, you, you are, your, your plot is in a, in a nice museum yeah, to be, go a little bit away from the money. You find the right people, you know, if they are, you know, you go to a street art gallery where, where, where more is my part of art. And yeah, I would meet the people there and can directly, you know, take the people around this gallery inside, you know. So yeah, it's it's also an educational way, way yes. what also John said before. So and everything is decentralized. There's nobody putting it in our brains. You know, I like to uh, meet a lot of people who are who are dead and where I think they are really really a step ahead of everybody. Yeah, I like to meet Gandhi or yeah, I like to meet all these people. That would be nice huh? to to have oh. the. It's, that will be uh, very interesting, right? If we can really recreate the uh, those, right? Will be <laughs> sometimes also. Yeah, not and what we, we need. Expect, to, they are the right people. But... Yeah, if John said, "Hey, this is this is Nikola Tesla. He has all the knowledge of Nikola Tesla." Mm. Yeah, I need to have a little bit of a proof. Perhaps it's just uh, John's grandma mm. telling me something. You know, well, I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, but this is what we all have. If we decentralize, we have to think a little bit more. There's nobody who guides us, so it's a little bit also train your brain uh, back to to error train it in this direction look what's decent yeah if you key in the wrong number when you make a transaction in a decentralized world then, then your money is wrong it's gone okay so it's a little bit you have to concentrate on yourself on being a good human being and giving it to others i think that is what smart places and mandala puts together and imx is just a small technology basis for that so this reunites all the three companies with the big dream of making things a little bit better thanks for the nice uh, summary uh, I'm, i have to ask all the guests because we have another 45 minutes we have a couple more minutes for one two questions from the audience since uh, since we didn't do that uh, at all yet um sorry for taking more time but um yeah maybe uh era if you want to uh, go and throw some questions from the audience uh, at our panel Brilliant. right so one of the most uh one of the questions that we received was can you please elaborate on the advertising revenue that can be generated with land and and can you also please specify other utilities that will come made available to smart place land NFT holders? Any scope for token airdrop to NFT holders? Yes, um, yeah, great question. I mean, several questions, um, maybe starting um, regarding the utilities, um, because uh, from a just a not long term perspective, but we will offer for as in the in the, in the next uh, month, then or maybe also weeks that um, the buyers of the land plots or the pioneers can swap their land plots. So it's not that you choose a plot and you always have to stick with us, um, so then you, but you you can change that. So as mentioned, if, if um, circumstances change and you um, consider that um, the, the one smart place today is not a smart place tomorrow, as I mentioned, the festival, for example, then you just uh, swap and change that. That is one aspect. Um, uh, except of that, yeah, regarding the advertisement, um, we are very happy and proud. We just announced it today to, to partner up with uh, Advanced Store. It's a great partner. Um, uh, in, not only in Germany, but worldwide, um, offering mobile advertisement. So what, um, what uh, that allows us to um, include brands like up to 45,000 to include this in our ecosystem. So also the land plot owners, the pioneers will benefit from that because they can uh, implement um, these affiliate links on their land plots. <clears throat> so that means um, for, for, for users, also beneficial for the land plot owners, um, yeah, they, they can um, uh, take uh, taking uh, discounts, for example, and um, special offers, so which you usually don't don't have. So we have a bundle of um, of, of benefits um, that um, are coming up, and of course, um, really exciting. Um, this whole ecosystem becomes when we launched our app in the summer. I'm just scanning through the um, questions. Um, great. So the second question would be actually, I think, uh, connected with that, but like an expansion of it. Is there a chance that we can use IMX identity to participate in ICOs, ideals, and just any blockchain stuff that has to do with KYC? Yes. 
<laughs> yes, yes, we can KYC, KYB, AML. That is uh, very important for us, for sure. That is one of the core uh, tech we develop in because it's uh, directly you have your, your decentralized uh, identifier. Um, let's say it easy in your wallet, but we don't. The usually question is, do you store data on the blockchain? No, we don't stay, uh, store data on the blockchain. Um, your personal, we don't do that. Um, it's it's the KYC also is it's always for the ICU ID always for sure. But you know more interesting is what if if you cash out crypto if you collect everything and you do a, you have a good life in Mandala good life in the smart places but finally you have to cash out. I think then is the latest point for KYC because then you flip from crypto into fiat. And I think this will be the regulation soon. I, I, it's, it's just, uh, I, I guess, uh, that uh, because the easiest way for all governments to cash to cash us, to, to tax us what we do. And um, it's also a better way in the gaming industry. First, you can enter the game and you can play and it's not too, you can tr try it a little bit. And if you cash out, then there will be a KYC, I think. And um, yeah, if you look into the Mandala world, you know, I think you need another 45 minutes how great this game is with you know you have to really be a strategic thinker yeah it's like more a strategic metaverse in my eyes so how i already play the game in my in my head and i don't know even <laughs> everything but you know this is also something if you have a love if you collect something there and i can't talk too much what mandala is presenting in the future but there will be also be like a, like a value perhaps you have to uh, get into fiat and uh, this is very interesting how the regulation in the future will be so we are living in our happy <laughs> echo chamber perhaps and the government uh, are still thinking we do something what will affect them in a really powerful way uh, yeah. so i'm well i'll add that i i am x for me and won us over because you put the power of kyc back into our hands right now it feels the reverse right it's i have to do this thing to do a thing well no wait when do i want to when do i want you to know that information and and that's what i'm loving about what you just said tim and what like i said you really want us over with that which is that no it's back in my control it's not it's almost like not it's not kyc anymore it's the reverse it's like kyo like know your overlord or something it's like when i'm in <laughs> control now right you know yeah. Yeah, right, this, cool. is, this is it. Too. All right, guys. Um, I guess we will, in order to respect a little bit uh, the time, I think we we're gonna wrap it up. Um, I think, um, yeah, we got a good idea of, uh, uh, at least I got a good idea or feeling of, you know, what the brink of, you know, yet another change coming back from, you know, power to big uh, centralized corporations. How we, there's actually a way to, you know, to uh decentralize and take ownership of identity uh, again identity my identity as it is now my various other identities that i'll have in all these different uh, different places for different causes uh, so uh yeah that sounds all very uh, exciting and refreshingly empowering right uh you know talking about everything that's happening so uh yes uh, i guess a a uh, good wrap up would be to say, look, there's a lot uh, coming up with the projects that you heard about, um, uh, the Mandala uh, project, and we'll share all of the links and everything in the email afterwards to check it out, to go straight uh, there. Uh, I have heard uh, rumors that there is a new uh, Mandala uh, kind of, um, uh, how to say a new uh, wave coming uh, is is it to be confirmed and uh, is there anything to say about it uh john you want to take that or you want me to go? yeah we're gonna have a second season of these sovereign nfts and just just to highlight that word sovereignty and and sovereign and this really tipping our hat to imx and what they're doing to provide you know the identity to the user and what smart places is doing to extend that into the real world and we're specializing in bringing people into the imaginal realm so that they can envision the hero that they can be in their own life. And that starts with picking up a sovereign NFT and getting into the metaverse. 
Fantastic. Uh, it's, uh, so check it out. Uh, the links are here in the chat, but we'll also send it around uh, afterwards. Uh, IMX as uh, the enabler for a decentralized kind of a self-sovereign identity is clear if you have anything, you know, if you have a need um, for these types of services for your uh, personal idea, I guess uh, Tim will be happy to uh, if you get in touch. And last but not least, uh, of course, uh, we are about, and I'm very excited about this one, is on uh, Saturday, uh, we will have the land plots uh, open up from Smart Places um, protocol. Uh, links will follow, uh, I guess, uh, Saturday at 4 p.m. UTC. Uh, so the countdown is running on the website. Uh, I, I try to secure our little spots, uh, my spots, and uh, yeah, excited to see what's, uh, what's happening. Um, okay, uh, that being said, don't forget to follow all of us, uh, including Ufostad, um, and any famous last words of anyone? Thanks for inviting us in this nice living room again. I really um, appreciate thank that. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Really amazing. Thanks. And you as a gamer, Mario, you have to talk more with, with John and Kevin because, you know, you will, you will get so, you will get into the game, I can tell you. I got that we need to talk about comics, maybe. You mentioned comics. Uh, this is my, uh, this is my, my turf for sure. Oh, well, then we do need to be, yeah, we should talk. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for Thank everyone. You. That you. had been great. Thank Have you so much. Fun. Thank you very much. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye.